Oh, hey, there we go, baby. There we go. Good afternoon, good morning, good something. Good day. Good morning, good, good afternoon, and good, good evening, depending on where you're watching in the world. My name's Jeremiah's J Man. And I am and I am Jeffrey Scott Stanton. I'm glad that I have three names just to kind of like it it goes in, kind of allows for us to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so shout out to everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Much to say about nothing today. Uh, but we are coming or on the topic. much to say about everything, because we do have yeah. a lot to say about a lot of things. That's that's very true. And today we're you know, Jeffrey's like, well, we're gonna just talk about nothing, right? We them. How about success? So today we're we're gonna our jump off point is success. Yeah. Success. I, I thought success was a good topic. I think it's because great. I, I think everybody strives for success. Well, not everybody. I think a lot of people strive for success. Um, but I think success is different for everybody because what's successful to me may be totally different than what's successful to you. So I think really when it comes down to being successful, first you have to f to find what define what is success to you. And I can't do that. And, and J-Man can't do that for you. It's just... What's successful to you, I think, is the first thing you got to figure out. Yeah, I agree, because there's so many people like, yo, I'm a success. I made it. I did it. Finally. They're successful in business, but their marriage is falling apart. and Their kids hate them. Or, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they there's so many different things that we should think about when we're talking about success. Because it, it, it's hard yeah. to really be successful in everything. Well, it's, I think, well, again, it depends what, is your, your definition, definition of success right. because you know people talk about a work-life balance and i don't believe in work-life balance because that means they're two competing forces they're trying to take the balance it should be more of like work-life harmony and i think really successful Ooh. people are who we like that deep really okay. successful people okay. are successful at both because i you know if business is happy and home ain't happy business ain't going to be happy for much longer if 100%. business is if business isn't happy, but home is happy, home's not going to be that happy. So that's why I, I don't see them as a balance. <laughs> yeah, they're they're together. Harmony. Yeah, I know Harmony. That's, that, that's so true because people, you know, when they, you know, we get people, they get into real estate or, or in business for themselves or sales or an entrepreneur. And they're like, I want to be successful. I want to do it. But they're not willing to do the things that's necessary to achieve it. They're like, well, I want to. But if, if I could just do the as little as possible, yeah. <laughs> where's the shortcut? Where's the shortcut? Help me out here. There, there, there are no shortcuts. And I had written down a whole bunch of things that I think people that make people successful in general. Um, Cause I, I don't think, even though this is a real estate based podcast, video cast, whatever you call it, I, I think we have other people outside of real estate. So I don't only really want to talk what's made successful as a listing agent or, or a buyer's broker right. or a as broker a or an owner. Let's, Let's let's talk about it in business because I truly believe that more people would be successful in real estate if they ran their real estate business like, like a business. true business, like like truly. So one of the first things that I had written down is to me, and this thing I'm I'm fortunate enough that that I get to deal with the ultra successful brokers and real estate agents from across from across the country, like the people on million dollar listing, you know those types of people that a lot of a lot of the I don't want to say the average agent, but uh, uh, the 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 median agent from across the country say, "Oh, that's success, that's success, that's success." But right. they each define success differently. You ask Frederick what he defines success. You ask Tracy Tudor what she defines success. They're all going to give different things. So, to me, what I've noticed about successful brokers, successful agents, successful business people is they all have some sort of routine. They have a routine that they do. Um, you know, they wake up at a certain time, they do their calling at a certain, there always is some sort of, so, some sort of routine. And I think that's part of what makes them successful because you're right, we get into real estate is, oh, I can make my own hours, I can do my own thing, and nobody tells us what to do. So, right. so I'm sleeping in till 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I, I, what is it, I called you one time this morning and then you called me back and you were uh, like, I was, I was like, asleep. And I'm like, no, you weren't. It was 8.30 <laughs> in the morning. There's no way like you were asleep. 8 o'clock or something like that, yeah. I'm like, so Jeffrey, I, I, you know that I sleep late. 
What are you doing calling me so early? I'm surprised no, you weren't out running or something in this. I, I had already ran. I mean, it's it's uh, like you just like you said, like, I, I truly believe in a routine. And that's part of what helped me make my way through the pandemic was like sticking to a routine. And like I could tell you every day of the week what I had planned from morning until the evening. And it didn't it, it didn't change. It had to stay the same because that routine kept me focused. You know, with everything else around me hitting the fan, you know, that that routine kept kept me in the groove while other people were putting their heads in the sand and saying, you know, the sky is falling. Absolutely. And this is also my thing, and the two go hand in hand. Successful people don't need to be motivated. I'm going to put a star here. Successful people are disciplined. That That's what they are. Because I posted this yesterday or yesterday in Facebook is – Show me your, show me what you did in the past 24 hours. Show me your calendar. Show me what you did in the past 24 hours. And I can predict how successful you'll be. Show me your discipline. Show me your routines. And I can tell you how successful you are. And, and I believe that's the truth. It's the discipline. The, it doesn't matter what that routine is. It's not motivation. Because, right. listen, we, we all have motivation, but then we, all, then we get times we lack motivation. It's like you go to the gym. Are you motivated to go to the gym every single day? Or are you disciplined? Because the discipline outlasts the motivation. Yeah, there, there's. You got to be self motivated, and and it's so important when you talk about discipline. Because uh, I was talking to somebody about this at the gym the other day. Um, if you if you did a class with me, let's say there's a group exercise class, I can tell you in a class in sixty minutes or less who's successful in life. Period. Mm -hmm. Right, because. They're disciplined, but they also have the ability to push past a certain point. When something gets challenging, there's a whole nother gear where it's like, yes, this is what I was waiting for. Not the, oh, I'm getting sweaty. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> it's to me, and again, success in anything, it's, it's, it's that discipline and it's that drive. Right. And I think like, I know I strive for that. Like, give me the challenge because in business to me, where the challenges are is where you make the money. Right. You know, that's when you truly have your value, when you make the money, when the, when you have those challenges, when you can push. And I, I think that goes to one of the things that I had wrote down is business people in general, it's singularity of focus. I'm focused on one thing and that's what I'm going for. And it, even the same thing at the gym. It's that, no, no, I'm going to do this 60 minute routine. I'm going to do this, whatever it happens to be. And, and they push through it. So I think it's routine is their disciplines and it's, it's to me, it's not even, like I said, it's not all that motivation because discipline and that routine doesn't matter if you're motivated or not. If you stick to that discipline, if you stick to that routine in anything in life, you, you know, you'll be right. successful. Yeah, you I know mean, what I'm saying? It's 10. I was going to say it's, it's, it's really easy to be motivated when everything's going right. Mm -hmm. You know, when you guys, Listing, boom, listing, boom, buyer offer accepted. Woo, I'm motivated, baby. I'm so motivated. But it's like, yo, know, when you have 20 offers you've written for a buyer that haven't gotten accepted, when you lost the listing to somebody, when, when you've been prospecting and you're not getting the appointments that you used to, that's where you need <laughs> that discipline. And, and that's where the real motivation kicks in because I know then at that point, unsuccessful people make the decision to stop. It's not working. Yeah. It's not working. I I I, I got to do something else, and then mm -hmm. that's where you know people like us would say, okay, great. I, maybe you should stop. <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe it's not for Listen, you. <laughs> I I've said it in I've said it and I've gotten in, in, in trouble before when you know I used to be a, a travel trainer that I've said in rooms full of people. Travel I said trainer. <laughs> it's only face sorry travel trainer like when you traveled around like you I'm do that you travel trainer. around and you train yeah, that's my thanks. point. I, on yeah. the road trip, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't mean that as a knock. Yeah, but I got you. I've I've stood up in front of classrooms and say, you know what, you're all not cut out for this. This may not be for all of you, and I would have brokers, I would have the boys. No, no, you can't say that. I'm like, I can't speak the truth, right? Because this is it, it's it's a type of business where unless you have that motivation or that discipline or that routine, you know, this is the discipline. I'm gonna pick up the phone at ten o'clock every single morning and make my phone call. And that's that discipline to do it no matter what. Like I said, show me what you did for the past 24 hours, and I can predict how you successful you'll be. Show me your disciplines and show me your routines. I know how successful you are. <clears throat> the other thing is, when you had said it, 
I think successful people in general don't make excuses. They take responsibility for the crap that can go wrong. Like it, it's not, oh, the market, oh, this person, oh, that person. It's on you. Right. Like to me, that's what, like all the successful people I know, if something goes wrong, it's on them. It's, oh, my assistant. No, it's not on your assistant, it's on you. You hired your assistant, you trained your assistant, your assistant screws up, take responsibility for it. That, that, right. That's on you. Right, yeah, I, um, I can remember I ran a Spartan race and one of my teammates like blew me out of the water by like an hour on, on like a five hour yeah. race. And he's like, what happened, bro? I'm like, I should have trained harder. <laughs> he's yeah. like, and he's like, oh shoot. Well, I got a comeback. He expects me to go like, I slipped and fell my shoelace. No, I should have trained harder because you were able to go further and faster than I was. Next time that's not going to happen. And I, and I'll, I'll, I will always take responsibility for, you know, my actions. What I did or <laughs> and, didn't that, do. and that actually goes to the next one that, successful people are students of the game like we learn we know what's going on we study the market and that's what it is like when you know how to train harder because you're a student of the game you know how those spot and races work and you know that if i would have trained harder i would have done better not that oh i'm not used to running in this type of weather oh, guess it's what so hot. it's so cold it's, it's too raining. hot like, training <sighs> well then train in that weather and get used to it right you, you know and they are successful people are students of the game and in real estate <clears throat> students of the game is students of your market. Like it, it is, are you the type of person when you're going to a listing presentation that <clears throat> when someone asks you about one, two, three main street that, you know, sold down the block with, you have to fumble through all your papers. Oh, let me show you that. Let, or is, do you know that off the top of your head? That's student of the game and student of the market. You know, we always get the new people. Cause I know you talk to a lot of new agents as, as well as I, and these new agents, well, how do you know what is what's the first thing I should do when I get into real estate? I said, This is the first thing you should do. Let everybody know that you're in real estate. The second thing you should do is visit every single property you potentially can. Like every single, every right. single house, every single condo, every single co-op, because market knowledge will beat experience. Market knowledge will beat the length of time that someone's in this business. Listen, I've been in the business 25 years at least 25 years at this point you have a brand new person who goes around and sees 300 properties they know their they know their market know better the market. than me yeah especially you in know, bigger cities like that where you know manhattan brooklyn queens mm -hmm. they know the market they know the ins and outs of all the buildings the pluses the minuses and it's it you know they always say um hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard that's a good example of it Yep. Right. They get comfortable. They're like, I am the number one agent in the universe and I must do nothing <laughs> but exist. And it's like, what? Yo, this this new guy is coming for your lunch, bro. You better yeah. you better be ready. <coughs> and that's the other up. thing. Successful people or people who will be successful are always hungry. It's always it's it's Insatiable never good appetite. enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that. You know, it's like their motivation is, and this is the thing, successful people generally aren't always motivated to be the best. The most successful people are motivated to be better than they were yesterday. That's right. their goal. I want to do better than I did yesterday. I want to do better than I did last year. And, and to a certain extent, some of them are even afraid that they're not going to do as much business as they did last year. And that's what drives them. Like they see that brand new person in the office all of a sudden that, hey, they're, they're busy, they're out doing, and it's like, wait, what's going on with that kid? What's going on with that guy? Right. Oh, he, he's on my tail. Let, let me put, let me make, let me make that push. Yeah. And, and I always like to say like too many people are trying to focus on being great and great as a measure against somebody else. Like I saw mm -hmm. this person and I want to be great like them rather than just focusing on being greater. Like what, yeah. what did I do yesterday? <clears throat> How can I get better? How can I just achieve the next level? And like you said, successful people never go, I made it. I'm taking a break. It's like, you know, you talk to them and go, man, you're really crushing it. And they're like, I am. Cause I don't feel like yeah. it. Every single person <clears throat> I've ever talked to is like, you're crushing it, bro. No, I got to do more. I got to do more. You know, we had an agent who did a hundred and a hundred and fifty million dollars in business, $150 million in business. That, that's that, that's the business that they wrote as Jamie and Seamus had in his conversation. <laughs> Hundred and wrote hundred and fifty million dollars in business, and he was worried that what's he going to do for the remainder of the year? 
Like, I'm, I'm like, what's going to, and I'm like, you know what? You'll always be successful because you're always worried about that. Not that, hey, I doubled, I did more than my goal was, more than what I did last year. It's like, hey, we have, you know, five That's months nice. left, six months left, whatever it happens to be, four months left. And it's like, what am I going to do for the next four months? Like, and I think that striving, and <clears throat> you pointed out, their goal, their goal is not to be the best. It's like a better version of themselves. And I had already said this guy, a coach told me this once is they, sh you want to strive for progress, not for perfection, because yeah, you'll exactly never right. be perfect. You'll never be perfect. Right. Progress. It's, 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 perfect. it's just yeah. not it's, but that progress, I think that's what successful people do. Successful agents is they want to progress to the next step. The next step may be number one in their office, number one in the company, number one in the world. You know, or their next step may be just their progress may be going from five deals a year to six deals a year. Or the same amount of deals, but more time at home. Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's also, you know, when you look at people being hungry and successful or busy working or working mm -hmm. on their, on their craft. Uh, and I found this early in my career, where I was like, I needed to try to find that harmony. I like what you said about harmony. Um, instead of balance, because I would come home and I would be grumpy. I'd be tired. I would be like, yep. you know, and, and, and why should all of my clients and the general public get the best of me and then my family gets what's left over? Like, I don't think that's fair. You should be able to to excel in all, all, all facets of your life. And this is the other thing. One of the things I wrote down is that successful people know when to turn off. They really have that their routine, their discipline is, you know, yes. at X time of night, my phone's going off. Right. Shut you your know? computer, shut it down. Absolutely. One of the things, one of the things I always can't stand. And, and if anyone's ever been in a training class, I've said it before is that, you know, you're at your kid's soccer game, you're at your kid's basketball game, cheerleading, whatever it happens to be. And you're on your phone sitting there texting. And then your kid looks up from the, you know, from, from the field or the court and they look at you and see mommy and daddy sitting there texting. What do you think a kid feels? What they are saying is that that phone call is more important than me. That right. phone call is more important than my time. And so again, it's that you know when to turn off. Like, are you out on are you out on a date? Listen, if you want if you want a first date with somebody, would you be sitting there texting you on your phone the entire time? Probably not. I don't remember what a date's like. I didn't do I at this point. But <laughs> if you're out there with your husband and if you're out there with your husband and wife, you know, it's the same thing. Are you sitting there because you're answering these business phone calls? So you have to know when to shut off. And I think that's what stops people from getting burned out. And that's actually what makes people more successful is because they have downtime. And I think downtime actually, you know, Jamie, how many times do you hear, oh, I'm so busy. I have to work seven days a week. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have, to. no, you don't have to, you choose to. Choose to. You know, that, that's, that's the big thing. And well, we got a question. if you don't shut any device on how to get bars out of the fence, you're taking a break. Yes. Kick them off the fence. <laughs> well, Billy, write in why they took a break. Write in why they took a break. Because if they say, hey, we're just taking a break, it's totally different than, hey, I'm taking a break to wait what happens with the market. Um, the other things I've written down is um, they surround themselves with successful people. Successful people surround themselves with successful people. Like, it, this, is, this is the thing. I was in a conversation with someone the other day looking to come over to, 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 to Element, to the company. And the person said to me, why would I want to be a little fish in a big pond when I can stay in my small brokerage and be the big fish? And I said, this is the thing. I would have been like, thank you so much. Maybe you should stay where <clears> And this is the thing. And I'm like, you should. And I, I didn't say that. But this, this was my thought is that <laughs> I know how much business you do. I know how much business everybody else's office does. You're always going to do more than anyone else in your office. But no one in your office co comes close to you. So right. – do you want to surround yourself with successful people and become more successful? Or do you want to be successful in an office full of five people? You know, I, I think successful people surround themselves with other successful people, successful agents surround themselves with other successful agents. Yeah. They want to be challenged. They like that competition. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's get back to Billy. So Billy, if your buyers are taking a break, I've encountered this recently. And I think many people have given the market yeah. conditions. Um, I always like to say, like, they can only fall in love so many times, right? So lost out on multiple offers. They think the market will crash eventually. They're, they are FHA and difficult price range for our area. 
<clears throat> okay. So the market will crash eventually. This is this is what I love people say. The market will crash eventually. We know what the market's doing now. We don't know what the market's going to do in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, a month, a year. The market could crash. Interest rates could go up phenomenally. And again, I'm just, I'm not saying this is going to happen. Market right. ra- Markets go down. Interest rates can go up phenomenally. And, oh, market, eh, interest rates, so I'm going to wait till interest rates come down. You know, it's that balance of we know what's going on now. No one has a crystal ball. And this would be part of the conversation I'd have with them. No one has a crystal ball. Are you willing to make a move knowing what you know now, or do you want to gamble on the future? And the key word there is gamble, linguistically. Or do you want to gamble on the future? Because now, as we know, the future is that gamble. That that's what would be my approach to it. Hit him with the NLP. Um, <clears throat> I also like to use relative stories. So track your market. You know your statistics. You know what stuff is selling for. And you're going to need to make believers out of them. First thing I would do is say, are we really taking a break? And I always use this example. Like we've all had a girlfriend or boyfriend at some point in our life that said we should take a break. And it's like, are we really taking a break? Like where you're going to see other people? Or are we just on a pause? <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I don't want to get in trouble here. There. Right. It's, it's, it's like, you know, are they going to see other people, meaning other agents? And if that's the case, then. Let's cut ties now because I'm still working diligently on your behalf, looking for you know properties and everything off market that I can do that I do as an exclusive buyer's agent. Uh, but then I would say, okay, I would send them a property and then they don't reply. Well, then I would then send them what that property sold for, or what I know it sold for. Um, maybe it's at at asking or below, and just keep keep dripping on them that way with statistics and factual data, so then eventually they can go, okay. <laughs> I'm done taking I'm a break. Still, I'm still laughing at the whole, are we really taking a break or am I going to get myself in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> I think and that's well, a great analogy. Because it's so, it's so <laughs> true, right? How many guys have been, oh. what are you mad about? You said we were taking a break. I didn't really mean a break where you could go talk to other girls. No, I meant well, yeah. I was taking a break. You hang around. <laughs> right. You just do nothing. I was busy testing out the market. Okay. Say that. Yeah, we might want to end that conversation. Well, yeah. don't say out to the girl, I was busy out testing the market. That's not something you want to say. <laughs> but it, <laughs> I mean, but it's, it. it's have those difficult conversations with the buyers that you're working with because that's how, even though, Billy, you're, like the description you gave, that they're they're challenging, they have FHA, maybe they, they minimum down payment, maybe they want to do an inspection, all these other things that could affect their, their uh, negotiation, you know, negotiating power. It's not going to be their fault. It's going to be your fault on why the offer didn't get accepted. And so just explaining that to them, I think, candid. And most of the times you can handle, and I'll call this an objection, but it's really not. You can handle it by just asking. Condition. Okay. So, yeah. So what's, what do you believe? The first question I asked them, so you think the master crash, when do you think that's going to happen? That, that's the first question I would ask them. Well, you no, know, sometime soon. Well, you know, all the reports are saying X, Y, and Z. And then, so if you believe the market's going to crash, how, tell me how that's benefiting you. Like, how do you believe that's going to benefit you? And let them tell you all the reasons why they're waiting, not just, hey, the market's going to crash. Oh, well, then you know what? The market's going to crash, and then, you know, we'll be a place in offer. Yeah, but if the market crashes, there's going to be an influx of buyers looking to buy. Right. And so investors. now you're competing against with more buyers and investors. So by asking the questions, I think you can narrow down on, on, on really why they're doing what they're doing. Because I think a lot of people say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just going to wait, you know, till the market slows down. But they, that's not their real reason. They're just using that as an excuse. So one of the things I heard an agent say this the other day, because we do a daily role play call. <clears throat> and he, <clears throat> we were role playing this out. And his exact words, and I thought this was phenomenal, was, you know, Mr. Smith, is it, there's two things that when people say that to me, they're going to wait because they think the market's going to slow down. Either they're trying to be nice to me, and they just don't want to say, no, they're not going to buy anymore. And they're using that as an excuse. Or that's something they believe because it's something they saw on TV or the radio or something like that. Which one would it is? Because if you're just saying that to me to, to just be nice and not tell me no, I'm fine with you telling me no. Right. And when he prefaces it that way, they're like, no, 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 no. We still want to do this. But we're going to wait till the market slows down because if the market slows down, we'll be able to do X, Y. And they give them all the criteria that they needed. So ask the questions. Most of the ways to handle this stuff is just ask people more questions. The difficult questions. Shout out to Yolanda Racinos watching from Hawaii. She's got to be, let me see, what time is it now? 
eight. Hello, Yolanda. Seven, we get a family questions seven. popping in the chat, and we'll answer the questions. We have like, I don't know, 10 more minutes or so. Is that correct, J-Man? Yeah, about 10 minutes. Hit Whatever. us up with some questions. You're welcome, Hit up some Billy. Questions, and we'll just go back to successful. So Yolanda, what's, what's what, up, Yolanda? Uh, Yolanda? You know, shout out to Yolanda, Hola. because let me tell you about her story, because I had her on my thing the other day. She, she's been up since 5.30, which is whatever. Um, she left this, just, she's from New York. She, she left a successful career as she was like a world renowned and Yolanda, you may put this in the, in the comments, exactly what you were, but like hair colorist kind of thing. She would travel to all these different things and she left that to follow her dream and go to Hawaii and get into real estate. Not that Hawaii wouldn't be a competitive market for real estate, right? Everybody wants to, you know, and, and, and she's doing it. She's doing it, man. Good so, for you. Platform artist. There she go. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Living the dream. Living the dream. Follow your dreams. So let's let's put a little more on the real estate aspect. As far as real estate, what do you think makes specifically? So I was talking about, you know, just business in general. Yeah. What do you think makes real estate agents successful? By your definition of success? I think just believe in them belief in themselves. Um because that's one of the things when I first started, people would be like, well, he he does this much. And I had to go, okay, he's just a person. Wait, when you see that they're just people that do business, there's no like, there's no crazy, oh my gosh, I can't do it. And it's like, if you just believe that you can and you and you do the, the necessary, do the things. I remember less, I went to a Les Brown thing. When I was 20 years old. This is like, I don't know, say how many years ago. Many years ago. And it always stuck with me. We must do the things today that others won't do so that tomorrow we can have what others won't have. And, you know, yep. so when we talk about prospecting, we talk about doing all the, the difficult things and having that routine. Uh, just like you said, the people that are successful, they have that routine on productive activities. Not like, yeah. what would you do today? Man, I did a Facebook post and then... You know, I, I had to send some stuff to the attorneys and then I organized my desk and then I sent out some postcards. It's like, well, you're doing all these things that, that you enjoy so doing. Let's, let's actually talk about that because yeah. I think those things can make you successful if you put the routine in. You know, how many times you'll hear an agent, oh, I sent out, you know, 500 postcards. I didn't get a reply. How many times did you do that? Twice. No, it's not going to happen after two times. Oh, I, you know, I posted what you said to do on Facebook and, and nobody responded. Yeah, well, did you post the 10 other things we said you should do? Oh, no, I didn't do that. But that's the thing. It's that consistency. I think successful people have that consistency. Is consistency, it their mailers? Yeah. Is it that phone calls? Is it reaching out to their sphere of influence? I don't care what you're doing to mark yourself. Even if it's at Starbucks having conversations with people, if you do that consistently, you'll be successful because it's an income generating activity. Now this is the other thing. Right. People who are successful in real estate, they just don't use one income generating activity. Like we used to call it like your four like legs of the table. Yeah. Yeah. What's income the four legs of the table? What's the four different ways you're going to go and get business from? You know, is it, is it that you're going to do mailers? That's great. And your sphere of influence. That's great. What are the other two? Cause if you just tell me, Oh no, I'm just using social media and that's all I'm doing to get business. You know, you might get some, maybe. Well, and it's good. I like that you said consistency because that consistency over time is really what makes the difference in any of your activities. If you're talking about social media, you're talking about, like if you're not mm -hmm. into video already, we, I've been talking about it for 10 years. Yeah. Plus, like this is the year of the video, repeat. Year of the video, repeat. Year <laughs> of the video. And it's like, you're still not doing it even after 16 months of you having to be on Zoom and having to buy this equipment. Like consistency over time, you'll see results. I promise. It's not, it's not like you do one video and they go, Oh, Jeffrey, I saw your one video. Fantastic. And you've got all these leads coming in. You but know? this is the thing that it's may happen thing. like that. There's a chance that that could happen, but that's not the norm. You know, it's not the norm that you're going to post that one video and people are going to, you know, Oh, Jeff's the greatest person in the world. They're going to say that anyway. You know, the greatest, the greatest person in the world. <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I really have to get my soundboard to work because this is not fair. Yep. Um, so what else do you think that makes 
you know, to me, and again, I, I'm fortunate enough to probably to deal with probably the most successful real estate agents and brokers. Like, like I wake up every single day saying, I'm amazed at what I get to do for a living. Like truly, because I get to deal with the, the brand new agents. I get to deal with the, you know, the middle agents. I get to, I get to deal with everything, but I get to deal with the ultra successful too. And it's amazing. Like when you look at them and see what they do, it, it's, it's, Listen, they don't do anything different than any of than They're any of you. They're just people. They're just people. I'll say this: they do it more consistently. Right. They absolutely do that more consistently that they post on social media if that's their platform. If they're sending things out, if they're doing newsletters, they don't do a you know if they're doing mailers and sending mails to people, they don't mail one time a month. They're mailing three and four times a month. Right. They have that and they do it consistently. They don't even look at the results to six to eight to 10 to 12 months later, because that's usually how long it takes to get to get results. Well, that's um, something that I was talking to recent. If you have million dollar listings in your market, and let's say I, I have them in my market, but there might be two. <laughs> okay, like yeah. at, our, at our average, our average, our average, I think our average sale last month was 1.9 million in New York City. Yeah, was okay. The, was the average. That's how I say about <laughs> it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> my face is great. You, know, you guys can't see my facial expressions if you're hearing this, but um, like Yol Yolanda <laughs> Racino's in Hawaii, her median sale price was like nine ninety seven yep. or something crazy like yep. that. But if you're in a market where let's say median is like four to five hundred, and there are million dollar listings and there's a fair amount, I was talking to this agent. And she said, "Well, I'm not sure I'm ready for a million dollar listing," and I'm like, "What? What? Yeah, I'm just not ready." I'm like. It's just like I said, they're just people. Yeah. And guess what? That okay. person who's taken million dollar listings right now didn't take million dollar listings until they did. Yeah. And, and this right and until this their is, first I'll, one. And then it's, yeah. They realize, <clears throat> oh, okay. If you always wait till it's the perfect time, if you always wait till the perfect time, you'll never do anything. This is what's called acting as if successful people act. If it's not the perfect time, they act as if it is and they just do it. This is the thing, there's the thing in, in, in uh, quantum quantum physics, it's called the Zagarnik effect. There's oh, never a perfect time awesome. to do anything. There's never a perfect time in the universe. All the stars aren't gonna be aligned. Like if someone, uh, I, I'm not ready to go for a million dollar listing. Yes, you are. Listen, understand the market, go and do all the research. If, you, if you're at you? a $500,000 price point and you wanna go to that million dollar price point, what you do is for, if someone calls you about it, team up with somebody who's at that million dollar price point. You know, we say it all the time, half a loaf of bread is better than no bread at all. Team up with someone, split it with them because they're, they, they know it. I and then spend the, the time research. Yeah, re spend the time researching the market. Because if you want to break with your price point, this is what you need to do and to an upper price point. And it could be going from $250,000 to right. $350,000 is you walk into that place and you know that market. You can talk about the 12 houses that sold and they're comparable, like off the top of your head. That's yeah. how you, when, when you can do that, people are never going to ask you, well, how long you've been in the business for? How many homes have you sold? Because that market knowledge shows confidence and they believe the belief of success. Well, and it's, if you want it, like we're, we're so blessed to be in an industry where you can give yourself a raise today. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, my first year in the business, I did 43 transactions, but my average sale was thirty eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And I was like, yo, I can't do this and, and live <laughs> like it's not a, it's not a sustainable business plan. And I, I consciously made an effort to improve that average sale price. And so if you're listening to this or you're watching this, then it's like make a conscious effort. To, I mean, we all got raises this year because the median sale price has gone up. 10, 20, 30%, depending on your market, you automatically got a raise because your average sale price increased. If you did nothing else, but now would be a good time to just say, you know what? I'm going to go from four to five or five to six or seven to a million, yeah, right? That, Yolanda, that she's going to get her million dollar listing on, on the water in Waikiki. Um, just to make sure you, you have an open house and we can all visit. You know, and I think this is the problem. And I think you said it earlier. Is this, I think we're almost at time. Um, are we going to able to keep track of time? Yeah, a couple 30, of minutes. 35 minutes. So th this is this is the thing. Jamin said you have to believe in yourself. And this is what I promise you. Anyone who listens to our stuff, anyone who attends our classes, listens to our podcast, wherever it happens to be, 
if you don't believe in yourself enough, me and him will believe in you. I'm, and I'm being honest about that. Like, cause I know, and, I, and I've said this in sessions before, when people are sitting there and a lot of times I have to say, I probably believe in your ability to succeed more than you believe in your ability to succeed. And, and that's the truth. And you can tell any of my students, you know, Absolutely. I've taught hundreds of thousands of people over the past, you know, 25 years. And, and, and that's the truth. You know, for those of you listening to this, watching this, whatever it happens to be, you're the person who's taking time out of your day to listen and watch this. Hopefully you're finding some value in it and use that. Like to me, if, if you're not listening to this, I don't believe in you. Like go out and do whatever you're going to do. Right. But if, you're if you can't time, hear this, then we <laughs> don't believe in you. If you can't hear this, then you're not going to be successful. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes you need that little push. Sometimes you need that little extra bit of encouragement that, that, Hey, I can go out there and do this. And th that's one of the things I know is back to the whole thing successful is successful people have coaches or mentors or tribes that they can go to, that they can bounce ideas off of that will tell them the truth, kick them in the butt when they need to be kicked in the butt. Tell them they're doing a great job and they need to do a great job, but somebody to bounce ideas off of. Right. Find somebody like that. You know, if me or J Man could be that for you, great. If not, find somebody in your office, find somebody in your life that you you can have a conversation with when you need to get that kick in the butt and you need to get that motivation or, or you need that pat on the back. You know, it, it, it's it's tough, but hello, Mrs. Racy. Hi, Mike. How are you? Mike works for us. Yeah, and uh you know, it comes right back to why we're doing this. I mean, we're not getting sums of money to create this podcast right now, guys. We're doing this. much better quality than this. Right. You know, but it, but it's, we do everything that we do. I, I can speak for myself, but I, I know Jeffrey's right there with me because we want to make a difference in the lives of everybody that we encounter. You know, if you're listening to this and you've, we've talked ever, you know that I'm willing to help. I mean, Jeffrey's called me for years. <laughs> He's like, yo, Jay, I got a question about this. And I'm like, I'm more than happy to help. I don't care about like, yo, send me a check. I need a consulting fee or something like that. My, my reward is to see you be successful or to see the agent that I helped or uh, the agent that came to me and said, you know, I was going to retire, but I took your class and now I have a renewed, you know, um, enthusiasm for the business. Like that's why we do this stuff. So reach out if you need referrals for other people if we're not a good fit you know we're we're happy to help you no matter what yeah i say this me and jay and jay man both come from contribution is what can we do to con what can we do to contribute and that's you know that's the reason i do this plus it's fun i get to hang out with jay man for 45 minutes you know whatever it happens to be you know um, and our backdrop today is i kind of like it this might be the permanent backdrop this, i took a picture i think we need window. a clip I'll do one. Oh, I have the backdrop for those. You know, I have the backdrop, the the the, the photo going out of the four thirty two park. So you're above the clouds. Look, well, it's one of our new developments. What do you mean you don't want? Oh, fine, Jamin. Okay, we'll see. You want to take a picture of downtown Rochester? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Rochester. This is. Uh, I know. I don't know where it it's is. Just, it's New York. I don't think it's New York. Is it? Mm. I think it is. Oh yeah, I think it is too. A little, a little blurry, but <clears throat> so all right, we have like two more minutes. I didn't have any questions. I know we have a bunch of people on here. And if you do have a question and like just pop it in the chat or if you listen to the replay, whatever it happens to be, just pop it in the chat and, and we'll address it, you know, next week or whenever we do this one next. Um, and if you find value in this, let us know. Otherwise, like me and J-Man would have no problem just doing this like for 45 minutes, just BSing with ourselves because we probably had the same conversation anyway. But I'm just curious, like when we do this stuff, do you find value in it? And just like, let us know. And if there's a different route you want us to go or some different topics, you know, let us know, please. Now, J-Man just going to make noise. Hold on. Crickets. Crickets. I don't like that sound at That's all. It's a cricket sound, bro. What are you talking <laughs> it about? It doesn't sound like crickets. It sounds like someone's trying to scratch a chalkboard, but that's not really working well. Okay, let's see. Billy says, keep, keep it, it going. going. Keep it going, Billy P. All right, I'll turn off the crickets. Thank you. Does she mean keep the crickets fabulous. going or she wanna keep the podcast going? I don't know. I think we'll keep the podcast going no matter what. We're just right. like I said, yeah. I'm just curious if it's something that like, hey, this is cool, you guys should keep doing it, or hey, go a different route. Because this is the one thing. I believe active I believe successful people actively invite feedback. 
And if you actually want to be more successful with your buyers, with your sellers, actively invite the feedback and give them permission to give you a feedback. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, you know, since you're selling your house, we're going to be doing business together for the next couple of weeks, couple of months, whatever it happens to be. So I would love if if there's anything great that I do, you can let me know. If there's anything you'd like me to do differently, you can let me know also. Every once in a while, I'll just check in and say, hey, how, on, how am I doing? Because if you actively invite feedback, they'll let you know if you're doing a great job or a crappy job. The problem is most people are afraid to hear the feedback. Yo, all right. If it, along the same line, uh, somebody last week sent me a message that said, man, that was a really great podcast. I don't really love the aesthetic, though. You guys need to work on that. <laughs> It's oh, it looks. I was like, well, it didn't look great last week. And that's part of why I made a new backdrop. <laughs> and I'm happy no, you well, came in with a new camera, like all of that. Uh, you know, even though it's a podcast and that we're primarily doing this for the audio, we still. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. It was okay. funny. <laughs> all right. So I think we're at time pretty much. We are oh, at time and we'll leave you with this guys. Look at, don't be afraid to be who you are. Number one, your authentic self, because that's where I have found the greatest success, whatever that level is, as I constantly try to achieve more, but it's, it's being true my whole life, teachers and employers. And I say employers, when I had a job, they would try to stifle, you know, say now he has a career. Now I have a, I, now I have a calling, right? Uh, that, that's what I feel like. I was born to do this. But before that, people would say, sit down, get no more talking. You've got too much energy. And that's that's part of what makes me different. And that I, I celebrate it. So thank you, Alanda. We love this. We love, we love you for tuning in. Um, and where do you listen to the podcast audio form? We're going to be putting well, that on. Jeffrey, you want to comment on that? Yeah, so it's actually going to be part of the Ellen podcast series. So we'll let you know next time once they start now. We have to do three of these before we can actually – Put them on iTunes, SoundCloud. They eventually will be and on Spotify iTunes, on. SoundCloud, and Spotify. And J-Man, just to let you know, remember you told me I had to, I had to look at the, the Facebook Live to see the feed? I can see the feed right here on, on the screen that we're using. I can see actually the feed now, the question. People are typing. You can't see the comp. You can see when I bring them up yes, on the screen. No. Um, Lauren just said your aesthetics is much better this week. Great info. Um, <laughs> it love was, this. Thank you. It was Lauren who said it, <laughs> I know. I can see. I, there's a little chat box. You know, there's a little chat box over here that can pop up. So everybody, that is who are you? Who are you? We're doing the closing now. Who are you? Oh, I am Jeremiah <laughs> J. Man Monero with J. Man Speaks. Thank you for tuning in. And I am Jeffrey Scott Zane with Douglas Elementary Real Estate. And thank you, everybody, again. We hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day and. Uh, be successful. Thank you, J-Man. Now we get more quick